Let's put the spotlight on the Peperomia obtissifolia. G'day and welcome to my channel, or welcome back if you've been here before. I'm Kathy, and today I wanted to put the spotlight on one of my favourite plants, which is the Peperomia obtusifolia. I actually own three varieties. In fact, the very first Peperomia I bought was the Obtusifolia variegata, and that is this one. I know it looks a little sad and a little small, and I'll explain why a little bit later on in the video. And this one I have owned for over two years now. I also have this one. This is the Jade Obtusifolia, or the species itself. And I've had this one for 18 months. The third one is the Lemon and Lime, which is a little too big to have here, but I will give you some footage of that one. And that one as well, I've owned for 18 months. If you've watched any of my other videos, you will know that Peperomias are one of my favorite genus of plants. I own quite a few, but I have been most successful with the obtusifolias, which is why I thought I would share my kid tips or how I look after my obtusifolias. I also wanted to give you a little bit of background about the plant itself. The genus is Peperomia, which is part of the Pepericea family, the pepper family. And there are approximately 1500 species of Peperomias. I have a long way to go before I can collect them all, I think. They are a epiphytic plant, which means they grow on other things like trees or old wood. They are subtropical and tropical plants. Most Peperomias are small and native to Central and South America. Peperomias are also pet friendly. So even if your pet does like to chew on your plants, you don't need to worry that they will cause any damage to them. The species of Obtusifolia is native to Florida, Mexico and the Caribbean and it was first identified by Albert Gottfried Dietrich in 1753. Obtusifolia actually means blunt leaved. And you can see why, as you can see, the leaves don't have a pointed edge. They're quite rounded at the bottom. The Obtusifolia does actually flower out of the three that I have, the only one that has flowered for me is my lemon and lime. But that one also gets the highest light. I'm sure that if I put the jade in higher light, it will also flower, but mine hasn't so far. And the flowers are nothing to write home about. They look like what people call rat's tails. And I will insert a photo here so you can see what they look like. In my experience, they can flower at any time of the year. I currently have another Peperomia that is flowering, even though we are almost in winter in Australia. From what I've read, they grow to around 25 centimetres tall. However, I would say that she is over that. <laughs> I think she is reaching around 35 to 40 centimetres tall. So they can grow a little bit taller than what I have read. And the growth pattern for these plants depends on the variety. This jade one and my lemon and lime were very small plants when I bought them. I think they were no taller than that above the pot. And as you can see, they've grown at least, I would say, 25 to 35 centimeters in 18 months. So they are fast growers. However, the variegata is a much, much slower grower. I think all those varieties or cultivars that have a little bit of cream or lemon to their leaves are slower to grow. The lemon and lime is actually a paler green to the jade 
and it has some variegation in the center but it is not a light colored variegation like the variegata is and I think that is why the lemon and lime grows a lot faster. In my experience the obtusive follies except for the variegata grow fast and they grow throughout the year. I have read that peperomias only grow in winter that is certainly not the case for me but Please remember that I live in Australia in the Southern Hemisphere and that might be why my peperomias grow throughout the year, but they put on the most growth during spring, summer and autumn. So perhaps it will depend upon your climate and where you live in the world as to when your peperomias will grow, particularly the obtusifolia. Obviously, they don't grow as much in the colder months, but they do continue to grow. And in fact, you can see quite clearly that she is putting on new growth here and here and here. And we are in mid-May, the last month of autumn in Australia. The obtusifolia can grow upright like this. I have staked her. That is why she is upright. If I don't stake her, then she will go sideways. And I didn't want that for mine, but it is entirely up to you whether you want her to grow upright or not. Now I wanted to go through what care I give my obtusifolias. Let's start off with lighting. The obtusifolias can grow in low to bright light. Obviously, the lower the light, the less they will grow. The higher light, the brightest light that you can give your peperomias, the better they will grow. My lemon and lime obtusifolia sits near my north facing window, which is the brightest light we can give our plants in Australia, and it will not stop growing. My jade version I have a little bit further back from the window, about a metre to two metres, and it grows, but a little slower. Now my variegata, I have had this one in low light, medium light and high light. It definitely grows faster in high light, but nowhere near at the same rate that my other obtusifolias grow. It grew extremely slowly when I had it in low light and in fact I think I was lucky if I got one leaf every few months. Whereas I cannot say that about my other obtusifolias. Clearly if you want your peperomies to grow faster give them brighter light. My understanding is that peperomias also respond very well to grow lights. I personally don't have any, so I can't comment on that. Being a subtropical plant, the obtusifolia prefers temperatures not to drop below 15 degrees Celsius. But in my experience, I turn off all my heaters at night and I know that the temperatures drop below 15, possibly even below 10, and my obtusifolias don't have any problem with that. So I think they can tolerate normal home temperature conditions. And you don't need to be concerned that the cold or extreme heat will affect them. I have read that the obtusifolias require high humidity, probably because they are subtropical plants. I don't agree with that. I believe that the obtusifolias can cope with the normal humidity levels in our homes. In my home, the humidity ranges between 38 to 60%. And my obtusifolias don't care which one it is. They haven't shown any sign of stress or not growing. However, because they are subtropical plants, clearly the higher humidity we give them, the better they will do. If we can mimic the conditions in which these plants grow, then they will do better for us, naturally. 
Peperomias vary. They are not all the same. Some have extremely delicate leaves, very thin leaves. Others don't. The obtusifolia has quite thick, almost succulent-like leaves. And their stems are quite thick and strong as well, which means that they store water both in their leaves and in their stems. And because of that, I believe they prefer to dry out completely. I allow all my obtusifolias to go to one on the moisture meter before I water them. Another way to know if they need watering is you can do Nick Pelleggi's taco test. You can see if you can bend it. Just be careful. I have snap leaves like this. But if you gently press like this, you will see if the leaf has any give. If it doesn't, it means it doesn't need water. If they are floppy, if they're easy to bend, then that means it probably does need water. If you're unsure, I would recommend that you obtain a moisture meter and use it to check the soil and check it on both sides. Don't just check on one side. Sometimes you will find that the soil can be wet on one side and yet dry on another. So I like to take several readings. Also, if you want your plant to grow more evenly, then you need to turn it. Because I allow my obtusifolias to dry out completely, when I water them, I water them thoroughly. I make sure that the soil is completely wet and then I allow the excess water to drain away before I put them back. You can of course prune your plant anytime you like if you don't like the way it's growing. You can cut one of the stems and she will branch. I actually haven't pruned her because I really love her the way she is, but I could quite easily prune her and I can propagate those cuttings. But I will get to propagating in a second. In my experience, peperomias are extremely easy to propagate. You can propagate by leaves or you can propagate by stem cuttings. And when I say leaf, I mean, if one of your leaves falls off or you want to cut it off, you can cut it, say, at the stem, at the base of the stem, and you can propagate that. Or you can take a stem cutting. You would cut below a node where a leaf grows, say here, and then I can propagate this entire bit. You can propagate in any medium of your choice. I have had a lot of success with sphagnum moss, but I know that they can also grow in water and soil. I haven't tried perlite though. In my experience, whatever method you use to propagate your obtusifolia, they root very, very quickly. However, leaf cuttings take a lot longer to develop into a plant whereas stem cuttings don't take as long. They're much quicker to grow into a plant. The obtusifolia, like most peperomias, has delicate roots. You will not find a huge root system on them. You will not need to repot unless it outgrows the pot. In the 18 months that I have had the two larger peperomias, I have repotted them. It is a little bit tricky sometimes because you're always worried you're going to lose some of the roots because they're so delicate. But it can be done and they coped no problem with being repotted. As to the kind of soil, I use a premium potting mix. However, I add a lot of perlite to the mix so that it is more well draining. Because the peperomias are epiphytic and don't grow in soil, they need as fast draining soil as we can give them. Now I fertilize my peperomias throughout the year except in winter. I give them a slow release fertilizer which lasts between three to six months. In spring and summer I sometimes also give them a liquid fish emulsion fertilizer. In addition to which I spray all my plants 
with sea salt, which is a seaweed extract solution. It's like a vitamin for my plants. They absolutely love it. And I think it keeps them very healthy. It also helps them combat pests. And that leads me on to pests. Generally speaking, the obtusifolias are more resistant to pests than other plants, say like alocasias. However, that does not mean they cannot get pests. They can. In the two years that I have had my Peperomia obtusifolias, I have only ever found spider mites on this one, which is why it's a little small. However, the mites did a lot less damage to this plant than it did to other plants which got spider mites. So I do think that they are tougher at dealing with pests than perhaps other plants. The reason this one is so small is because my dog also broke one of the stems, which I am now propagating. And I've noticed that this broken stem has got a little leaf on it. So it will hopefully grow back. But given how slow this one grows, I imagine it's gonna take quite a long time. Obviously, like all plants, they can get pests. They are known to get mealybugs and aphids, but I have also found spider mites on my Obtusifolia variegata. If you want to avoid pests, then I recommend that you check your plants every week to two weeks and ensure that there is no issue with any of them. Peperomias are notorious for hating overwatering. If they do get overwatered, their leaves will fall off, their stems can get mushy, their roots can develop root rot. I think the easiest way to kill the obtusifolia is with overwatering. Now I'm sure that there are other problems that they can get like any other plant. At the moment, I am dealing with a yellowing issue. I have been doing some research, but I'm not 100% sure why some of the leaves have got a slight yellow tinge. I might have over fertilized or I might have underwatered this plant. I am not sure. Regardless, she is still growing quite happily. And it doesn't seem to have affected her other than showing as a little bit of yellow on some of the leaves. Unfortunately, like all plants, occasionally you will come across a problem that it might take a bit of time before you can find the cause. I would say that out of all the plants that I own, the obtusifolias are one of the absolute easiest to take care of. I don't think they require anything extraordinary or any great skill or even experience. I think these are a plant that beginners could grow quite successfully as long as you don't overwater them. That would be the major killer of the obtusifolia. If you ask me, I think these are absolutely stunning plants. I'm extremely attached to all of mine, even my very sad variegata. But hopefully that one will grow into a nice big bushy plant in maybe another two or three years. Whereas this one and my lemon and lime are a constant delight. They are absolutely gorgeous. Well, I hope you enjoyed this spotlight on one of my favorite plants, the Peperomia obtusifolia. If you have any care tips that I haven't covered in this video, please do put them down in the comments for others, including myself, because we can always learn something from each other. And if you found this video useful, you can give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to my channel as it helps my channel to grow. I hope you all have a beautiful day and a beautiful weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.